If you are a Mossy Earth member, you know we've done a lot of reforestation on land. But last year, we started wondering what we could do with the ocean floor. You see, restoring kelp or seaweed forests gives us an opportunity to not only capture carbon in a different way, but also to spread our impact to marine ecosystems and positively affect biodiversity in those areas. These often forgotten subaquatic forests are at the cradle of the ocean, but have disappeared from the coast of many European countries. If we are serious about fighting climate change and stopping the loss of biodiversity, then this is a great opportunity to jump into action. Hi everyone, welcome back to Mossy Earth. Today we are here in Portugal to kick off our kelp restoration trial. Last year, around the start of the pandemic, Tiago, one of our biologists, reached out to Jan, a marine biologist from Sea Forester. Together, they hatched a plan for a trial to test a kelp propagation method using the spore bag technique. The species we will be focusing on is golden kelp. Its range extends from Morocco to the UK and, as such, can be used in multiple projects along the European coastline. And, given its range extends to warmer waters, it may be more resilient to climate change. To get things started, Jan and Inês from Sea Forester headed to the north of Portugal to collect the reproductive structures of the kelp. This here is the saurus, and inside are billions of spores, basically, uh, out of which can grow new kelps. Now we cut it above the merisem, which is now down here underwater. Um, but if we cut it above, as I said, um, the plant can continue to grow, and we didn't kill it, and we have our material. The kelp was then dried and kept cool overnight, so that it will start releasing the spores once it comes in touch with water. The goal will be to dive at the three sites that have been prepared by Jan and their team and to put the reproductive kelp structure that was harvested from the north of Portugal inside the mesh bags so that the spores can come out and it can start reproducing. To ensure the spores are released on the seafloor, we are bringing the kelp down to each dive site in a Ziploc bag. This way, we only open them down there and we will lose less spores in the process. To help us in this project, we are also partnering with José from Club Naval Cascais who provides the diving gear, the boat, and the local dive site expertise. José was the first one to go in to find the dive site, as this area has very low visibility and we need to conserve air for the task ahead. Okay, looks like we're doing a truck here. Yeah. <laughs> Plan of action is where well, we all go down together, all four, so that we have one, one dive per site on the three sites we have today. Uh, first, um, Jose and I will check if all the, the bolts, the screws are still attached properly that we deployed the other day. As we had to use glue, I'm not so sure, so I'm taking some line down also. Uh, if we lost some of the screws, we're just going to tie the, the mesh back so to the rock. Uh, then once they are secured, the, the seaweed master has um, all the material. So we're just going to insert them into the mesh bags take the, the plastic back out, tie them up, and then basically move away and hands off because they might actually release their spores quite quickly. José sent his SMB to the surface to let us know he found the first site. By this point, it had been more than two years since my last dive in the pre-pandemic world, so I was really excited to get it underwater again. As you can see, the visibility isn't great down there, but there are a few fish and some beautiful sponges. But it really looks like it could use a pretty kelp forest right on these rocks. After the mesh bags were securely attached to the boats, it was time to put the first kelp in. As you can see, we really tried to keep the bag closed and only open it right when we are pushing the kelp in the mesh bag, so that any spores that get released fall on the rock and on the mesh bag instead of being scattered. In total, we got six kelp bags done at this site, which will be sufficient to test this method here. Good. Very good. The attachment points, I wasn't so sure if they were fitting well, but super good. For the second site, we had a bit more trouble finding it because the visibility was lower and the GPS markers not as accurate. I, I can't tell from this, it's either here or there, somewhere in this area. So it seems like uh, 
we have uh, a yeah, victory. Josef found the, the second side. We were getting a bit worried there that we might not find it. So we're gonna go quick now to uh, put some of that kelp. Put the bags down, put the kelp in there. And then so we can move to the third side before these ones get too hot. After the trouble finding the site, we also had to contend with a bit more surge, caused by the waves. But the work itself went like clockwork, and we got another six kelp bags done at this site. Okay, we're now on our third site. We hit it straight on, so this time we don't have to go looking for it. Everything looks really quiet, looks like a... But apparently there's quite a bit of current down there, so... Uh, but yeah, we're hoping to get the third side done and uh, that'll be it for, for the day. <laughs> for our third and final site, we hit the spot right away, which was lucky because the current increased significantly. So we had to drop right on top of the anchor and it was indeed less than a meter away from the first bolt. We added another 6 kelp bags to this site, for a total of 18 bags for our trial. While this might seem like a low number, please remember this is first and foremost an experiment to understand how well this technique works. While we will use other, more scalable methods such as green gravel for other sites, this spore bag technique is ideal for areas where there are deep holes in the rock and also where there are scattered rocks and a sandy bottom, as is the case here. Together with C. Forster, we will be exploring new methods for kelp propagation and then scaling them up to start making a serious impact on the coastline. All of this was funded by our amazing Mossy Earth members who have a monthly subscription with us to fund these projects. If you would like to support projects that fight climate change and stop the loss of biodiversity, then please check out mossy.earth and consider becoming a member. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving the video a like. Until next time, cheers.